This is a brief little video to show you how um, to work with distributions in R. Um, uh, this will help you on the first homework assignment because on the first homework assignment uh, will involve computing some binomial probabilities. All right, so I mentioned in the lecture that um, to do these binomial calculations, there's a function in R called d binome. Uh, that's what I've highlighted here. Um, now, whenever I mention a function or you, you read about a function in R and you want to learn more about it, um, you can read the help file for that function in R. Um, so the way to access a help file for a function, if you know the name of the function, um, is to do question mark uh, d binome, which is the function we're interested in. Um, if you send that over to the console, it will bring up a help file. So in our studio here, the console is still up here, but it has uh, made this little window bigger with the help file for the binomial distribution. Okay, so every function in R has a, a page like this, which gives information about it. Um, they're all uh, organized the same way. So um, you see the name of the function um, down here. There's a title for the page. There's a description in, um, of, in words, what the function does. Um, and then there's a usage page, which tells you how the function is used. Now, um, some groups of functions are documented together on the same page. And that's generally the case for these distributional functions. Um, so for the distributional functions, there's usually um, four or so different uh, functions that are documented together. And they all have kind of the same um, naming convention. So there's D binome, P binome, Q binome, and R binome. So we use D binome to compute um, specific values of the probability mass function of a random variable or the probability density function for the random variable. P binome is used to compute uh, the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. I'll give an example of that in a minute. Q binome is something uh, called the quantile function for a distribution. And R binome um, is a function for simulating um, random variables from that distribution. Um, okay, so that's the page for binome. Um, on the rest of the page, it has information about um, how the function gets used. So the usage, it tells you what the arguments to the functions. So x, size, prob, and then there's a, a function or an argument with the default called log. And then below that, there's an argument section which tells you about the arguments. Um, so I'll, I'll explain what this, what this function does, but let me um, go through. There's usually a details section. Uh, that gives uh, some mathematical or computing details about what the function does. Value tells you what is returned from the function. Um, so you, if, you, if you call the function and assign it to a variable, this tells you what, what gets um, returned. And then most of the R help files will have some examples on, down at the bottom, which can be, be useful for you to see how the function gets used. Okay, so that was binomial distribution. There's one of these for every one of these uh, named distributions. So let me just pull up a uh, help page for dnorm. So this is the page for the normal distribution. Um, so there's dnorm, pnorm, qnorm, and rnorm. Um, just to show you how this works, uh, the arguments to rnorm, so we're going to simulate some normal random variables. n is the number of observations you're simulating. Um, there's an argument called mean, which has a default value of zero, uh, which is the center of the normal distribution that you want to simulate from. And then normal distribution has another parameter called standard deviation, uh, which is how variable the distribution is. So if I wanted to simulate 100 normal random variables with mean one and standard deviation two, I call this, assign it to variable y, so what y is, it's a vector of variables that are simulated from a normal distribution, and there's 100 of them. And I can make a histogram of them 
and this is what the default histogram looks like. Um, now, just to prove to you that these are really coming from a normal distribution, I'm going to simulate a million of them, 10 to the 6, with the same mean and standard deviation of 2, and make a histogram of that. And so that's a nice, clean, normal distribution that you can see is centered at around 1 and has a standard deviation of about 2. Okay, so in the homework, you have to do computations, computations with a binomial distribution. Um, so the, the function uh, for calculating specific binomial probabilities is d binome. So let's suppose that um, we have a random variable y with a binomial distribution, n equals 10 and p equals 0 0.7. And I want to calculate the probability that y is 3. So the syntax for that is to call d binome. First argument is... Um, the value that you want to check uh, what the probability is for. So that's 3. Size is n, which is 10 in this case. And the third argument is prob, which is we specified as 0 0.7. So if I run this, this tells me that uh, the probability that if you have a binomial 10, 0 0.7, the probability of getting a 3 is pretty small just slightly less than 1%. Okay. Um, also in the homework, you'll need to compute um, probabilities for ranges of values. Um, you'll have to compute things like what's the probability that um, a binomial is bigger than some specified number, 5 in this example. So there's a couple ways of doing this. The way I like to do it is to just use the D binome. Uh, one nice thing about the d-binome uh, function is instead of specifying an individual number, 3 as we did up here, we can give it a, a vector of numbers. So here I'm giving it the vector 6 through 10. And I can input that vector of numbers as the first argument. So second and third argument are the same as before. So that's the vector of numbers. And what this returns, and let me see. I'm going to print these out together. Is the first element of the thing that got returned is the probability that y equals 6. Second element is the probability that y equals 7. Third is y equals 8, so on and so forth. And you can see, if you look at these numbers, they kind of make sense. We had n equals 10, and probability is 0 0.7. So the most likely value is 7, and that one has the highest probability, about 0.27. Okay, so if I wanted to calculate the probability that y is bigger than 5, I calculate the probability that is equal to 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and 10, which is in probs, and then I just add them up. So the probability that a binomial 10, 0 0.7 is bigger than 5 is equal to 0 0.8497. Okay, um, there's also another way to calculate um, probabilities for inequalities like this and that's using the p binome function. So what the p binome function is, it, it calculates probabilities that look like this. It, it's p, dot, p binome gives you the CDF, and the CDF gives you um, this type of quantity. Uh, this should be a y. Let me fix that. Uh, CDF is a probability that the random variable is less than or equal to a specific value. Um, so if I wanted to calculate, for example, the probability that uh, y is less than or equal to 7, I call p binome with 7 as the argument, size 10, probability equals 0 0.7, and that gives me 61.7%. Now, I can also compute this using d binome. If I want to get the probability that y is less than or equal to 7, I just pick out all the values that are less than or equal to 7. I, I feed them into d binome, and then I add them up. So this should give me the same exact answer. Okay. Um, you'll often be asked, and even in the homework, you'll be asked to compute probability that y is bigger than some value. Now the complement of this event, y bigger than 5, is y less than or equal to 5. 
And so I can calculate probability y bigger than 5 by doing 1 minus the probability of the complement. And so if I wanted to compute this, I can also use p binom, but I have to do 1 minus the value. Um, so this would compute that probability. That's probability y is bigger than 5. And you'll notice that that's a uh, familiar number. We got that uh, right here. And just to reiterate that point, we could have also used d binom to calculate this probability, y bigger than 5, by just plugging in all the values that are bigger than or equal to 5, feed them into d binom, and then add them up. And we get the same answer.